Hello, everyone, and welcome to our immigration updates and Q&A session for international students at SFU. My name is Karen Lockyer, and I am an international student advisor at SFU. I am joined today by my colleague, Stacy Bryant. Stacy is a study abroad officer in the International Services for Students, or ISS office, and, we will be, and she will be helping moderate our discussion today. For those of you who are attending the live session, you may see Stacy sharing resources in the chat box from time to time as well. Before going through our agenda for today, I would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging the Musqueam, Squamish, Sailwatooth, Katsi, Quiquitlam, Kikite, Kwantlen, Semiamu, and Sawasan peoples on whose traditional territories our three campuses reside. Just to go over our overall agenda today, we will first start an overview of recent updates to Canadian immigration policy, as well as restrictions on entry into Canada. This component of the presentation is being recorded. We'll then devote the remainder of the session to a question and answer period. On that note, I know that you'll have many questions and we will cover as much as we possibly can during both the presentation and the Q&A session. As things are always changing, I may not have all the answers and those that I do may change or they may also be changing right now as we speak. The information we share today is current to the best of my knowledge as of today's date, which for those of you who are watching the recording is December the 4th, 2020. For those who registered for the live session, we will be sending you an email in the next few days with a list of resources you can refer to, as well as a feedback survey you can complete just to tell us what you thought of today's session. All right, let's get started. I thought it might be helpful to start with an overview of the exact topics we'll be covering today so that you'll know what to expect. We're going to go through each of these one by one. As you're likely aware, there have been many changes over the past nine or so months. SFU shifted to online learning in March in response to COVID-19, and this has continued for the majority of courses through fall 2020. The university has announced that most courses will continue to be del delivered remotely during the spring 2021 term as well. Many of you have questions about how online learning might impact your study permit and your future post-graduation work permit. From an immigration standpoint, Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, or IRCC, have confirmed pretty early on that er online learning will not impact study permit compliance or post-graduation work eligibility for students who are in Canada. With regards to the post-graduation work permit, if you are outside of Canada, IRCC has confirmed that you may take up to 50% of your program online without impacting post-graduation work permit eligibility. And in some cases, 100% of the program if you started an 8 to 12 month program in summer or fall 2020, although this will not apply to most SFU students. IRC has also confirmed that the 50% requirement is calculated based on the total number of courses completed in Canada. Finally, IRCC has confirmed that students who will remain outside Canada at this time due to travel restrictions or health precautions may begin classes while outside of Canada without impact on their post-graduation work permit eligibility if they fall into one of the following categories. They are holding a valid study permit or they have been approved for a study permit or they have applied for a study permit prior to starting their program of study in one of the following terms, spring, summer, or fall 2020, or the spring 2021 term. 
In addition, the time spent studying online through April 30th, 2021 will not be deducted from the length of the overall post-graduation work permit for students in these categories, provided that they are eventually approved for a study permit. Keep in mind that you must hold a valid study permit to study if you are physically in Canada, even if your courses are being currently offered online as a result of COVID-19. Several of you have asked if you can take a term off or if you can study part-time in the fall 2020 or the spring 2021 term. As such, I want to note that in order to be eligible for a post-graduation work permit, students are required to maintain full-time student status during each semester of their studies, with few exceptions. IRCC did announce some flexibility in cases where students were forced to drop to part-time enrollment or take a term off for reasons related to COVID-19 for the spring and summer 2020 terms. However, this flexibility has not been extended beyond the summer 2020 term. As such, studying on a part-time basis or taking the spring 2021 term off, for example, may impact your eligibility for a post-graduation work permit in the future. Additionally, although there was some flexibility on enrollment requirements to be eligible to work both on campus, off campus earlier in the year, Again, this flexibility was not extended to the fall 2020 and spring 2021 terms. Therefore, if you are in Canada and you wish to work on campus or off campus while you're studying, keep in mind that you must be enrolled full time. And so this means the fall and the spring terms for our undergraduate students and year round for our graduate students. The only exception to this is in your final term of study where you can maintain work eligibility while studying part-time only if you are full-time in all other required terms throughout your degree. Keep in mind that students who are eligible to work off campus are limited to working a maximum of 20 hours per week. And we ask that you please ensure you are adhering to this limit for your off-campus work if you are in Canada and eligible to work. Similarly, in order to be eligible for a post-graduation work permit, again, full-time enrollment is required. If you had a gap in full-time enrollment earlier in 2020, that is to say that maybe you were forced to drop to part-time or take a term off due to COVID-19 in spring 2020 or summer 2020, IRCC has stated an intent to exercise flexibility when it comes to post-graduation work permit eligibility in these cases. You will need to include an explanation and supporting evidence with your post-graduation work permit application. Please contact us for case-specific advice on how to address periods of part-time study or time off in the context of a post-graduation work permit application. Next, we will go through some key updates on application processing and biometrics. COVID-19 has continued to disrupt application processing and processing times might be longer than what is listed on the IRCC website. Delays are to be expected, but if you are in Canada, please rest assured that you will have implied status as long as you apply to extend your study permit before your current study permit expires. Please keep this in mind as this is very important. If you are here in Canada, you must apply to extend your stay before your current study permit expires in order to maintain your status as a temporary resident here. This rule has not changed. I'd also like to note that if you are a continuing student outside Canada and your study permit has expired or will expire while you are away, Applying for a study permit outside Canada is not considered a study permit extension application, but instead it will be a new study permit application that will be processed at a visa office outside of Canada. Although you may start or resume your program remotely by taking courses outside of Canada without having a valid study permit, 
It is important to remember that you must have a valid study permit, permit in order to continue and attend in-person components of your studies while you're physically in Canada. Since not all study applications are approved and since processing times continue to be impacted by COVID-19, it is strongly recommended that you apply for your study permit as soon as you are able to do so. And if you have questions about this, you can definitely contact us. Information on how to apply for a study permit extension in Canada or a new study permit from outside of Canada is also available on our website. For more information, and detailed instructions on how to apply for a study permit outside Canada, how to renew your study permit, your work permit, or your visa inside Canada. You can also have a look at our online instruction guides, which are on our website. And like I just mentioned, we're always here to support you, so you can contact us too if you have questions that are not addressed there. Although some visa application centers are beginning to open for biometric collection, Biometrics collection continues to be suspended in many areas of the world. Study permit, visa, and work permit applicants who are physically in Canada continue to be temporarily exempt from the requirement to give biometrics. For those applicants outside of Canada, deadlines to provide biometrics have been extended and your application will not be refused for failure to provide biometrics during this time nor will it be approved until you provide them if you are required to do so. Please check the IRCC website for the most updated information on biometrics enrollment services worldwide. If you submitted your study permit application before September the 15th, 2020, your application may be eligible for two-stage study permit processing. And some of you may have also received an approval in principle of your study permit application at this time. Note that having an approval in principle is not sufficient to travel to Canada. You will not be able to travel to Canada as a student until you have a study permit or a full study permit approval and you are eligible to travel to Canada under the current travel restrictions. We will dive more into the topic of travel restrictions in just a few moments. Students who are currently in Canada and have been approved for their study permit applications that were being processed outside of Canada may request that their study permit be issued within Canada and mailed to their Canadian mailing address. This is a temporary measure and it will be in place until March the 31st, 2021. If you are currently in Canada as a visitor and you submitted an outside Canada study permit application that has since been approved, Feel free to contact us directly and we will be happy to guide you with regards to how you can request your study permit to be issued from here inside Canada. We have received quite a few inquiries from continuing students who are currently outside of Canada and need to apply for a co-op work permit. If you are currently outside Canada and you need a co-op work permit, there are many factors that need to be taken into consideration. So for example, when do you intend to travel to Canada? When do you hope to start your first co-op term? Um, when does your study permit expire? And what are the current processing times looking like? Unfortunately, with all these considerations, there is no one size fits all solution for every student. So if you are in the situation where you're outside Canada needing a co-op work permit, we do encourage you to contact us directly so that we can help you assess your options based on your individual circumstances. Note that in order to submit an in-Canada co-op work permit application, you are required to be physically inside Canada. All right. Let's move along now to talk about um, the current travel restrictions that are in place. One of the most common questions we are receiving at this time is, is when can I travel to Canada? And also many students who are currently here are wondering whether they will be allowed to return to Canada if they return home during the winter break. 
While again, there is no one size fits all answer or approach to these questions, uh, the Government of Canada did introduce updates to the travel restriction exemptions for international students on October the 20th, 2020, which were positive in the sense that they may allow more international students to enter or re-enter Canada. When you're thinking about traveling, I want you to encourage, I, I want to encourage you to consider what is best for you right now. Because the question is not only, can I travel to Canada, but also, should you travel to Canada? What decisions will best support you? What will best support your physical health, your mental health, and your academic success, all of which are critical elements of your well being? If you're a new student coming to Canada for the first time, how will you manage the major transition to life in a new country and culture given that most instruction and services are continuing online at this time? Is time zone difference a concern for you? Do you feel comfortable traveling at this point? These are all things that are likely on your mind. I would also like to clarify that SFU and the Canadian government are not recalling students to Canada or requiring students to be here by implementing these updated travel restriction exemptions. If your preference is to remain outside Canada and take online courses at this time, you can certainly do so. On the topic of travel restrictions, I'd like to note that the temporary travel restrictions for all travelers seeking entry into Canada from a country other than the United States have been extended until January 21st, 2021. Travel restrictions for US citizens and foreign nationals arriving from the US remain in place until December 21st, 2020. As COVID-19 continues to evolve, rapidly, these dates may be further extended if needed. At this point, it is unclear when the travel restrictions will be lifted, how long the travel restrictions will remain in effect, or if there will be further changes made to the current travel restrictions or exemptions. Under the current travel restrictions, as an international student, you must meet the following requirements in order to travel to Canada. First, you must either have a valid study permit or have been approved for a study permit and have a port of entry introduction letter from IRCC. If your study permit application is being processed under the two-stage approval process, I would like to note again that having approval in principle or first stage approval of your application is not sufficient for travel to Canada. You must also be attending a designated learning institution or DLI with a COVID-19 readiness plan that has approved before your travel to Canada. And I'm happy to report that SFU does have an approved COVID-19 readiness plan in place. Finally, you must be traveling for a non-optional and non-discretionary purpose. So what is essential or non-discretionary travel you might be thinking? Travel will be deemed discretionary or non-discretionary depending on individual circumstances and the Canada Border Services Agency or CBSA will make a final determination on your eligibility to enter Canada at the port of entry when you arrive. If you are coming to Canada as an international student, it will be important that you are carrying the required documentation, that your DLI is on the approved list and that you are coming to Canada to study. International students who meet the requirements as discussed should be considered to be traveling for an essential purpose and may be able to come to Canada regardless of the date of issue of their study permit, the letter of introduction issued by IRCC, or the country from which they're traveling. We ask that you please do not make plans to travel to Canada until you are absolutely sure that you meet the requirements for entry including either final approval of your study permit application or a valid study permit and a valid temporary resident visa or electronic travel authorization if required, depending on your country of citizenship. Immediate family members, so for example, your spouse or common law partner, dependent children, may be able to come with you to Canada provided they have the proper immigration documents 
and providing the reason for traveling is also non-discretionary. Generally speaking, immediate family members seeking to accompany and support you during your studies in Canada should be considered to be traveling for essential or non-discretionary reasons. At this point though, non-essential non travel to Canada, such as tourism, short-term visit, is generally not allowed. Depending on their country of citizenship, your family members may also require a valid temporary resident visa or visitor visa or an electronic travel authorization in order to travel to Canada. So to quickly recap this topic and, and some considerations to keep in mind, the final decision with regards to entry to Canada will always rest with an officer at the port of entry. And we as advisors cannot 100% confirm for you whether you'll be permitted to enter Canada. However, if you plan to travel soon and you would like further advice on the requirements, you are welcome to refer to the guidance on our COVID-19 immigration and travel frequently asked questions website and contact us if you have questions. You may also contact the Border Information Services for more information as well. Please refer to IRCC's website for a list of documents you are required to carry when traveling to Canada. You can also again refer to our COVID-19 Frequently Asked Questions website, which also includes this information. We are also at this time strongly recommending that you contact your airline in advance of your travel date to Canada just to clarify whether there are any additional documents that you will be required to carry with you in order to board your flight. It's also important to note that you should be prepared to demonstrate that you are exempt from the travel restrictions both at the airport in your departure country and when you enter Canada. And last but certainly not least, please ensure you have the appropriate immigration documents and or authorizations required to travel to Canada before you travel. If you are unsure or you have questions, please feel free to contact us directly. The Government of Canada has put in place emergency measures to slow the introduction and spread of COVID-19 in Canada and one of these measures includes most travelers from outside Canada being required to quarantine for 14 days upon entering Canada. As such, if you are planning to travel at this time, keep in mind that you will be required to quarantine for 14 days upon your arrival. You must make a quarantine plan and submit it to both the federal and provincial governments. Please see our self-isolation guide, which is located in the COVID-19 section of our International Student Advising and Programs website for more information and details of the steps that you can follow. International travelers are required to submit their travel and contact information, quarantine plan, unless exempted, and COVID-19 symptom self-assessments through the Arrive Can Federal application. You can do this up to 48 hours before you travel to Canada. Make sure that you are ready to show your Arrive Can receipt when seeking entry into Canada, as a Border Services Officer will verify that you have submitted your information. Failure to complete the step may result in you being denied boarding of your flight. All travelers will also be required to confirm within 48 hours that they have arrived at their place of quarantine or isolation in Canada. And those in quarantine must also complete a daily COVID-19 symptom self-assessment during the quarantine period. Like I mentioned earlier, in addition to the, this federal requirement, all international travelers to British Columbia must also submit a self-isolation plan for approval prior to their return or upon arrival to BC. And finally, we do ask that students who are planning to travel to Canada uh, should register their travel and isolation plan with SFU directly as well, at least 10 days before traveling. You should have received some email communication about this, and you can also find information in our self-isolation guide about travel restrictions, quarantine requirements, resources, and tips on developing your quarantine plan. 
We ask that you register your plan with SFU because this helps SFU better coordinate supports for you during your quarantine period. If you have received final approval of your study permit from outside of Canada, you should also complete the Vancouver International Airport expedited processing submission form. This will help expedite the process of issuing your study permit upon arrival. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to talk a little bit about medical insurance. You know, it's, it's always been important that you have medical insurance while you're here at SFU. However, it is especially important now to ensure that you have adequate medical insurance coverage during your stay in Canada. For those of you who are located here in BC, the British Columbia Medical Services Plan or BC MSP have made some temporary policy changes due to COVID-19, which includes providing coverage to students who are holding implied status in Canada while awaiting a study permit extension. The temporary coverage has been once again extended until April 30th, 2021. And if this is something you're interested in, you must apply directly with MSP. MSP are also providing coverage for medical services related to suspected or confirmed cases of COVID-19 for individuals in BC who aren't eligible for MSP. And you can find more information about all the COVID-19 related updates on the BC MSP website. With regards to the Guard Me insurance, only new students in their first term are enrolled in this temporary primary insurance plan as it is intended to provide students with coverage during the three month coverage wait period for BCMSP. Continuing SFU students are no longer automatically enrolled in Guard Me in each subsequent term and are required to apply for MSP if residing in BC. A reminder that new MSP applicants will have their coverage backdated to the date they became eligible for MSP, but no earlier than September 1st, 2019. So please keep this in mind if you are now applying for MSP for the first time, but you've been living in BC for some time already, as you will be required to pay backdated fees once you are enrolled with BC MSP. During the coverage wait period for MSP, it is strongly recommended that you hold valid primary medical insurance if you are in Canada. So you may need to enroll in another medical insurance plan like a private medical insurance plan to cover you in the interim. If spring 2021 is going to be your very first term at SFU, you will be automatically enrolled in the Guard Me SFU plan for your first term. You may also enroll your spouse, common law partner, and dependents in this Guard Me plan as well if you would like. And for more information and details about the policy, you can visit the Guard Me at SFU website. If you will be starting your first term in spring 2021, but you aren't planning to come to Canada during that term, you may also apply to opt out of or cancel the Guard Me by completing an out of Canada waiver form by January 30, 2021. Moving along to the secondary medical insurance, which is offered by the SFSS and GSS, um, for current students, the opt-out period for fall 2020 has already passed. So if spring 2021 will be your first term, and if you will be starting your first term remotely outside Canada, you may apply to opt out of or cancel your secondary medical insurance benefits during the regular opt out period, which is January 4th to 18th, 2021. But one thing I, I do want to highlight here is that if you choose to opt out of the secondary medical insurance, you can't be added back for the rest of the policy year. If you are completely 100% certain that you will not be in Canada at all between now and August 31st, 2021, and therefore you wouldn't be able to use your secondary medical insurance, then you can opt out of or cancel the plan between January 4th and 18th in order to receive a reimbursement. If, however, you're not completely certain whether you'll be traveling to Canada between now and August 31st, because um, I know there's a, there's a lot of changes and a lot to consider, you, you can also think about deferring your opt-out for this plan until July 2021. 
there's going to be a retroactive opt-out period from July 5th to July 19th, 2021, for students who were unable to come to Canada during the 2020, 2021 academic year, um, did not opt out of the secondary plan during the regular change of coverage period, and who did not submit any claims for plan benefits. You can visit the Student Care website and that's www.studentcare.ca. For more information on this, uh, because I know it sounds really complicated and it is, <laughs> um, and, and you can, this will help you to make an informed decision. Thank you so much for your patience um, with me going through all of these updates. I know that there was a lot of information packed into this session and um, I finished with the updates now, so we're going to move on to the question and answer period. I'm going to end the recording in a moment. So for those of you watching the recording, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to contact us. Um, and we, we really do look forward to, to meeting you hopefully very soon in person when it's safe to do so. If you are viewing this video on our website, you should also see a link to a feedback survey next to the video and we encourage you to click through and complete it to tell us what you thought about today. Thank you so much again, and we hope to see you again very soon.